All right, here we have Bitcoin, of course, starting off with the crown trading application today as the open interest on the global scale is going to be a major, 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 major focus for this next month of likely March or not likely, but definitely March to come. That is one thing that I'm very, uh, very, very confident about. However, the rest of this video is going to be laying out major validation conditions for the higher term timeframes in order for in, in order to have a major bias on what to expect essentially in March and potentially April and uh, whatever month is after that one as well. Anyways, as you can see over here on the global open interest scale we do see that it is actually taking a nice leg down below that 10 billion dollar marker so i actually do have a couple of more alerts over here at some major extremes as 10 billion is not going to be the area that i believe most people are kind of looking at it as that's going to be the 9 billion and 8 billion region specifically i want to see actually about eight and a half billion so i actually don't think that i can do uh, uh decimals on this particular alert by the way you can set this up for yourself as well if you so desire but I do want to essentially be notified when Bitcoin is at these next major extremes, kind of similar to what we saw over the summer and early Q4 of 2021. Anyways, with that in mind, uh, I do still look for the global open interest to continue to unravel here. And that doesn't necessarily have a implication as to whether price action goes up or down. In this case, uh, we could very easily see, or it's not that we could very easily see, but if we saw, this would be a very, very pertinent signal, meaning that open interest coming down, which I do believe it will come, do uh, come down further from here. And then if let's say price action were to go up specifically above about 39,550 the same area that we've been looking at for the past few days here as a major validation condition for upside continuation then I would look at that as a really big change in the market uh in the market um uh, underlying dynamics until then you know if we do see the open interest continue to come down alongside price action that would be suggestive that uh, this market is still washing out some over leveraged longs I do suspect anyways with that in mind funny rates do suggest that the market is a little bit more on the short side or more aggressively on the short side I should say as that does represent market positions um and in this case if we go to the hourly rates by the way which you can get with the premium features which i do have because well because <laughs> because this is my fucking app uh, we do see that it is the highest level or sorry not the highest level but the lowest level the uh, the lowest negative levels that we have seen um in at least a couple weeks here uh going back to the 23rd of uh of february of course so right now it is negative hey stop that uh negative 0.012 percent so that does mean that short positions are paying to halt their positions now of course when shorts are or bears are essentially in control and all time frame uh trends are to the downside it's not a major condition uh sorry concern however if we do match this with price action we do see a move again specifically above that not 39,550 ish region then i would be looking at that as a major continuation signal as there's going to be a nice little uh, short covering party after that to follow on top of that we do see that the fear in green index is also at a 26 read right now and I should probably take this moment to let you know that the premium features on the uh, Crown Trading app are live. You can learn more about them over here. But right now, we have some very important things to be getting on into in the charts themselves. So I want to follow up now on the short-term time frame analysis. As we did see our uh, as we did see our pullback uh, hit both of our targets, that being at the thirty-eight thousand dollar level right here, the three eight two, and then we did see that continuation drive to the six one eight. In this case, I do consider this a test towards the six one eight, which is which is in the mid thirty sixes. And so far, it has held up. Now, does this look like it's super strong price action right here? Uh, constructing a major low as of right now no it does not and ultimately i do have the same sort of short-term time frame analysis that i had on the last few uh on the last like i guess uh, almost uh, om almost a week now as before in the sense that, look, as long as Bitcoin's below 39,550, there is no major threat of any sort of upside continuation move on a full hour closing basis. Very specific right there. You'll notice yesterday, Bitcoin cl actually closed very, very close to that region, which is why I did actually uh, make a little bit more of an effort to be more specific with the numbers simply because, well, I suspect that, that something like that could happen. And we did see a closure right at 39,500. But in this case, that is why I was very, 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 very uh, deliberately clear with with it at 39,550, of which we did not see a single exchange, um, or at least any of the ones that I track, close above that region, that being BitMEX, Bybit, uh, Coinbase, Bitfinex, and Bitstamp. So until that does happen, uh, I don't really have any reason to be looking at this as a major low with targets uh, up to about 41,500 and probably more over time as well. But for right now, there is something a little bit more pertinent to our current position on price action, which is a downside resolution below 36,500 or so on a full hour closure. If Bitcoin does take out the 618 on a closing basis, uh, even on a even on a full hour basis, I, I would I would uh, prefer to use a higher term time frame uh, simply because it is, you know, it, it is kind of like a big implication right here. I would be 
be looking at another run towards our current lows from uh, from February, that being at you know just below thirty five thousand dollars. Probably another bounce there, and then very likely continuation to the macro uh, cycle, or I wouldn't say macro cycle lows, but macro range lows, which is in the twenty nine to thirty one thousand uh, dollar uh, area. Anyways, in this case right here, I w uh, again I need to see that valid in order for me to look at that as a nice clean and clear breakdown. First, first with targets towards this blue box, very likely a bounce there, and then probably sets it up for continuation a little bit later. Anyways, going into our momentum oscillators over here, they certainly are a little bit more on the bearish side, but I should reference CME on a day like today. And I would say that it is also on the bearish side as well. We did see Bitcoin volatility actually coming down off of extremes right here on the short term timeframes. So I'm looking at this next move as, you know, potentially a corrective move. But what would be very concerning is if we see volatility reset, you know, coming back down, especially below uh, 25 percentile in lower is better and then and then expand alongside an actual break to the downside that would be pretty damn uh, that would be pretty damning so to speak but ultimately you know I, I suspect that today's today's price session is probably gonna be run off of some sort of news stories uh, with regard to the geopolitical situation which again I'm not qualified to comment on anyways if we go over to our uh, to our stochastic momentum over here you will notice on the shorter term time frames to align with this and again we're gonna get into the higher term time frame soon enough sir we're not right now um, anyways uh, we do see four hour stochastic momentum turning the downside as long as Bitcoin is below 30 uh, 38,700 or so and it is kind of playing out a trend line here as well so I should denote that and on top of that I imagine all of the other lower term time frames are on the same side yes buy hourly is down and hourly is also down as well but we'll be flippy floppy here but it is it is an hourly after all six hour and 12 hour are also freshly turning as you can see right here six hour will turn down below 38600 12 hour will also uh turn down below about actually 35700 so not anytime soon and the daily very specifically over here on cme will turn back up above 39150 so i would say that it, it you know if i am going to be the most aggressive as i can be uh with potentially calling a major reversal to the upside um, at the soonest, which uh, which I think does carry a bit more of enhanced risk with it, then I would be looking for a daily closure uh, today uh, on CME, specifically above 39,150. Juxtapose that against what we see on spot price action over here, and things become a lot more clear. Any sort of a daily closure below 35,650 on spot price action, 7 p.m. Eastern time, we will see daily stochastic momentum turn back down. This would also be a rejection of getting out of the bearish control zone, thus bear still remaining in control on the daily. Trend would obviously be down, and we would naturally see that level that we spoke about right here on the 618 at 36,500 met as well so these conditions would not just be a range break and a continuation move but also daily momentum turning against it as well which would be pretty fucking damning uh at least in my opinion for bitcoin bull loss so that's kind of what's at stake in the next 24 hours and then the big things are going to obviously be on the monthly time frame of which i'll start off with a little bit of hopium right here and then i'm going to bring it around and just absolutely fucking destroy you with some doomium so apologies for that in advance but let's just get ready for this perhaps let's just get ready for this anyways uh the hopium is that the accumulation distribution indicator over here which essentially has called all of the macro shifts in direction on bitcoin um I wouldn't say perfectly, but but has gotten them to a good enough degree where I think that it truly matters uh, is actually losing its downside slope. And I really only care about the slope changes in these extreme levels right here. Yes, you can draw some regressions around this, you know, fair enough. Uh, but I've also uh, highlighted with these blue vertical bars right here where those shift chains have been. And you can see on a macro scale, it's been incredibly fucking good, both to the upside and the downside. One of the few indicators that even told you that uh, March 2020 of two years ago was going to be absolutely fucking devastating. Anyways, with that in mind, we do see that coming into the month of February, the slope to the downside has been drastically reduced. Obviously, that is not the same thing as a positive slope, but it does suggest that the downside, uh, the downside is waning. Um, well, in its uh, in its severity. But here's the thing: if we come into March, if we come into March, and this still has a downside slope, well. <laughs> well, it, there's, there's, I, it's just historically not, not very responsible to be calling for a reversal to the upside. Um, and on top of that, we've not really seen these reversals without first getting into the red zone right here. So a little bit of doomium with your hopium as well. And that would probably align with, you know, another tick, maybe two of coming down somewhere around here. And then if it is going to flip to the upside, probably do see that. But that would be, I suppose, April at earliest and more likely May, if that is going to happen to begin with. On top of that, we should identify this over here, or sorry, First over here, we'll look at monthly stochastic momentum. This is also a bit of a problem for the blue laws as well as we do see that it is uh, certainly, or it's already turned down coming into the month of February, but now it will officially lose the bullish controls on right here for the first time since, for the first time since September, 2020 actually. 
um, with any sort of closure today below 54,330 or so. So that's uh, pretty 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 far away from current price action. Not looking too too damn good on that one. And I've also marked off with these uh, green vertical lines right here all of the times in history where we have actually lost and rejected the bullish control zone on monthly stochastic momentum. And there's only been twice in the history before, similar to what we're looking at right now. I mean, you can maybe argue that this one was one right here as well, but still the effect was rather devastating. And you can see that they were essentially bull traps on the last uh, pair of cycles. To take that one step further, if we go over here, and this is really what I kind of hinged the majority of this analysis on, and, and, and this is really the big one for me, and this is the one that uh, if met, um, I'm well, I'm going to be pretty fucking bearish coming into uh, probably later March, uh, April-ish region would be the monthly right here. The monthly MACD has, has already crossed the downside for the fourth time in history. This happened in January to February, and we have seen the result of this particular signal three times in the history of Bitcoin, all of which you can, you can verify yourself by these green vertical bars right here, all of which have been astronomically downside moves, always coming down to the green 55 exponential which doesn't I mean it's always going to happen like that but historically speaking has been incredibly relevant in this case again just going over the statistics and whatnot of this and then you can make your decisions for yourself obviously i mean i'm not here to be your dad i'm just here to show the charts and the way i'm looking at them and then obviously you as a rational adult or hopefully a rational adult uh can make the decision for yourself the right decision for yourself if you will anyways on top of that this signal needs to be combined with the next portion of it which is the white 20 simple uh, as you can see on the charts right here and anytime that we've seen that monthly macd cross the downside plus a a simultaneous loss of the 20 simple uh, at some point after that while monthly momentum is to the downside that has made the signal uh, more I suppose, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, not aggressive, but more time relevant, meaning that as soon as you lose that white 20 simple, for example, right here, that's when price action really started to accelerate to the downside. You can see it spent another three months kind of oscillating around after that first major break below, and then finds its lows around the 55, which takes like a year from there, basically. You know, it's, it's not like these things happen overnight, uh, or at least in that instance, nor this instance right here, where you do see it in, of course, uh, May, June of 2018. We get the monthly MACD cross the downside one two three four on the fourth month right here closes just ever so slightly below the 20 simple the next month the next two months bitcoin finds its lows after about a more than 50 percent dump ola and then over the next uh you know four to four to six months bitcoin does recover a bit and puts in a nice rally off the uh, 3,100 3, lows all the way to $14,000. And then, of course, we have this one over here coming into, again, uh, March 2020 dump. Uh, told you a month and a half before then. And as you can see, this one this one closed below the 20 simple and at the same time did already test the green 55 as well. So it's not like... Um, you know, that that one happened rather fast, being that it was a rather critical situation. Could that be applicable to what we're looking at right now? Honestly, maybe yes. <laughs> maybe yes. In the event of like something truly spect uh, spectacularly awful going on in the world. Again, I'm not, I'm not qualified to speak on these situations, but I am. But I do have some eyes and my eyes have shown me this morning. I was reading a White House uh, like something official from the government uh, in the White House that was basically like what to do in the event of a nuclear uh, uh, explosion going off. And <laughs> look, you have to have a fucking sense of humor about this, but honestly, <laughs> the instructions of what to do, the instructions of what to do in the event of a nuclear war were painfully similar <laughs> to what <laughs> to what was instructed off a of fucking Rona. For example, they do suggest that you socially distance. I'm not fucking joking, by the way. This is this is real. I'm, I'm not fucking joking they suggest that you socially distance six feet away and then also wear a mask and then also stay inside it's like we've been preparing for this for the last two years and now it's really a big deal anyways instructions don't die as Folson says yeah man, that would be that would be ideal although good luck with that man if something if something truly uh, awful like that does happen anyways as you can see right here and to bring this one first full circle we do see that obviously the monthly MACD has crossed the downside so what's the next big p puzzle piece for me to be looking for in order for this to become a somewhat or I guess a reasonable likelihood of happening or at least 100% in the past doesn't mean it's always going to be like that, obviously, but the, but the statistics are quite good, I would say, uh, would be a closure below the white 20 simple on the 
on the monthly here, which is currently situated at 36,840 on uh, the index. And if we go over to Bitstamp, it's, it's the same thing. So I'm gonna run with that one. In this case, however, I would say that there's a degree of error, of course, around that region. I wouldn't say like if it literally closes $1 below, then it must, you know, it must come down. I really wanna see it close, like let's say, you know, below about 36,000 uh, on the monthly or 36,500. But you'll notice that that naturally lines up with even the short-term time frame resolution right here to the downside. So all of these things obviously play and feed in, into each other and as we do come into the end of the monthly here you know that would be well more and more relevant obviously so uh so so that i do believe is is worth watching on even a short-term time from uh on a day like today again the closure for the monthly happening a little bit later tonight i also want to talk about hopium to the upside uh, well it's not necessarily hopium to the upside it's just you know the upside validation conditions are the exact same as, as exact same things as before 39,550 on a four hour closure nothing less at that point i do look for bitcoin to make a move up somewhere around the 618 bearish tracement right here which would be 41,500 above there on a medium or higher term time frame closure i would also feel comfortable likely calling an early reversal from this uh you know from this from from this major low and probably targets up towards you know mid to low fifty thousand uh, dollars in the next couple months so that's kind of what's at stake in the next 24 hours here we've been talking about this we've been preparing about this for a long time now on this channel in the last couple of weeks now we're about to get clarity on the situation you know in less than 24 hours and actually uh, actually to be exact on the on spot price action about 17 hours 27 minutes and uh 26 seconds so that's what I'll be waiting for tonight. I'll actually have an alarm just so that I can uh, see it myself uh, because decisions very likely need to be made after that. But other than that, I want to wish everyone a, uh, a a nice and safe Monday in a more sincere tone. I know that things are kind of crazy in the world right now. I don't know what to say about that, but I do know t uh, to say that, hey, just do what you can and um, and let the chips fall where they may and just, and just make as best as possible with that. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully all those validations and invalidations uh, made sense in that uh, nice long 15 minute ramble. And there you go.